Welcome once again to Fantasy Island. We still haven't found Ricardo Montalban, who seems to be lost somewhere on the island. Um, hopefully he's enjoying himself peacefully. Anyway, regular viewers of this channel who are familiar with me in other spaces will remember the Ferrari about a channel called Guilty Black Guy. They will also remember me asking Guilty Black Guy some questions about Swahili culture. They will also remember he didn't answer me. Now, of course, he could contend that it's annoying to be commanded in that way or whatever, but it did seem very strange when I asked him that he um, suddenly disappeared from the conversation, as it were, straight after that. Now, I asked him a particular question about wooden doors. Um, I didn't ask it for a stupid reason, although it may sound stupid, and here's why I did ask it, and I'm going to share some links, Swahili door. A Swahili door, a Sanzibari door, and I'm not going to try and pronounce the Swahili as I am not Swahili, um, is a door that was developed in the Swahili coast during the Middle Ages. Before I go further, though, I should point out, I have worked with lots of people who are Kenyan and from that area of the world and lots of parts of Africa. And that's how I knew about these doors and their a significance in, in this particular culture. The older Swahili doors are found along the African coast from Mozambique Island to the northern coast of Kenya, especially in older Swahili cities, such as Bagamoa, Mikinandani, Mombasa, Malindi, Lamba, Tanga, and Zanzibar. These doors are a mark of status and privilege for families. And they're pretty impressive doors sometimes, and pretty impressive bits of carving, as you'll see. That's why I asked him about him, because you could not possibly be Swahili and not have heard of these doors, because they're such a big part of the culture and tied to so many things in it. And some of them are huge doors that were used to show status on merchant settlements or areas like that. Funny enough, he couldn't answer me. As you can see, these doors are quite impressive bits of carving because whoever carved that had to be a master carver. Um, a real master carver. Here's, a, uh, here's another one. Another one. Now, here is a video about these. Now, I'm going to check I've got the sound turned on for this because, as I, say, as I said before, a particular, as a function of... Um, the wonders of Zoom. I hate that you have to click to turn sound on to share things. It's quite annoying. It's quite annoying that bar as well, that if you're sitting on my side of the screen, it actually blocks the top of the screen. But here we go. For the exhibition, partly because I'm just fascinated about the theme, which is the worlds of the um, East African coast, but particularly um, the whole interaction of the material culture. So looking at the Swahili cup doors, I'm looking at Leso, I'm obsessed with Leso, and I'm also fascinated in how Leso, which is something we all know, has got such a great... As tradition. you can see, the door plays into parts of other Swahili culture. I also asked him a question about two other aspects of Swahili culture. Funny enough, he wasn't able to answer those. Now, those were less material parts of Swahili culture and were something that were more numinous and rooted in particular t traditions of storytelling or, or literary devices. Funny how he couldn't answer me, but let's carry on with this video. Also with the carved doors. So like Leso, Swahili carved doors are part of our material culture. Many of us are not aware. While carved doors are common to this region, what we call Ziwaku, Indian Ocean, the Swahili have people who come who know the doors from all over the region will be able to look at the unique character of the Swahili cup doors and know that these doors, even though they may have influences, so you, you know, you'll see some styles and they'll say this is from Persia, or these ones have influences from India. When they came to this coast, there are certain things that were done and certain ways that they were constructed that also are testament to the fact that they were made on this soil that we're in. Um, because our and as a lady points out, and it's another thing anyone Swahili would have known about these doors, they're influenced by various other cultures and carving from various other places, both in Africa and outside it. Funny, funny how somebody who is making such a big deal about their pride and their culture wouldn't be familiar with such a, a major aspect of it. 
Our region also had a reputation of having some of the best hardwood in the world. Um, the doors that it produced were also seen as a sign of prestige, they are a sign of, of strength, they are a sign of endurance, they are a sign of innovation, things that we value up until today. So while today we may look at them, some people look at them and just say, oh, those are I'm just beautiful like doors. Door they are actually doors that are full of history, they are doors that are full of meaning, and they are doors that remind us of the kind of people that we can aspire to be because we have already been. Now, that was quite an interesting video, but I'm going to stop that. I have a few other things to point out. One, there's no harm in posing satirically if you're trying to upend the view that white liberals can be racist. Of course, everyone has their own prejudices, and sometimes we have unconscious ones that need satirically irritating. But the problem is you've posed as a gent from Nairobi, but when asked about the culture, you plainly don't know anything in depth about it, and you're probably copying links from Wikipedia. I'm probably copying stuff from to tell you who Joma Kenyatta was when I asked you, because you more or less mirrored when I asked you Joma, who Joma Kenyatta was, your answer more or less mirrored the Wikipedia extract on him, and it told me what tribal group he was from. And that's the first couple of lines of the Wikipedia entry, funnily enough. Secondly, several of your replies, well, more than several, several dozen possibly by now, have centered around American politics. Most tellingly and damningly, you've used the word Hispanic and gone on about that. Neither a European nor a Kenyan would care less about being Hispanic. That particular racial paradigm is an issue in the US and to a less lesser extent because, of course, it crosses over with the US-Mexico because the Mexicans have to deal with the fallout of it. And just for your information, the, the gen sitting here is I'm a core Hispanic by American standards, as my late mother was half Spanish. It's not very noticeable in me, but my mother had exceedingly black hair, long black hair when she was younger and looked like far more Spanish than I ever will do. My only <laughs> relic of that genetically is the fact that I have to shave about nine times daily. <sighs> really, it's uh, using a game like you're doing satirically can be funny up to a point. If it's obvious, it's satire. I've done it myself, but I've made it obvious it's satire and obvious that the figures I've created are done to hysterically to create a satirical outlook. But when you create a personality where you're obviously sitting there with loads of AI churned out photos that look like vague games, in-game shots from something like Cyberpunk 2077, it's not conceivable. It's also been four weeks since you put up that video. And funny enough, you haven't created anything since. You've just wandered around um, uh, offering banalities. Your other um, examples you've given are everything. You've gone on at length about Barack Obama. Yes, of course, he's connected to Kenya. But you've done it in a particular way that su suggests America is a land of milk and honey almost, which is very strange for a Kenyan. Um, you've gone on about American court cases. You've gone on about the NFL and American football. I wasn't aware the NFL was a, a huge thing in Kenya. Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps we were, perhaps I'm wrong. It is a presupposing you're not Kenyan. Perhaps on your next video, you'll you'll take a, a, a trip around the streets of Nairobi and show us some of the local sites there, or talk to people in shops or street vendors or, or so on. Who knows? We shall wait and see.